Good afternoon and welcome to our vigil prayer for Sister Michaela Zayner. A special welcome to her nephew Patrick, nieces Ashley and Stacy, and her brother Bill. Welcome to good friends Pat Dumphy and Mary Ann Keenum. Also with us, welcome to Michaela's reception members of 1959. Roseanne Cook, Patrice Kulik, Suzanne Giblin, Joy Gilder, Mary Ann Keenum, Elizabeth Lywe, Mary Hugh McGowan, Mary Ann Nestle, Geraldine O'Laughlin, Carol Jean Peterson, Jean Paul Sellison, Barbara Volk and to former members of the 1959 reception and the staff at St. Joseph's Academy, we're happy you are with us. And now, slide, aware of God's presence with us, we now quiet our minds and hearts The soul of Michaela has been received by God, along with the angels and saints already there with God. Can we pause to remember the saints of your own family and friends who are ready to receive you into everlasting glory? Quietly picture them and call them to mind as we pause. Mindful of God's great love for Michaela and for us, we pray as one with all of the sisters of St. Joseph throughout the ages and around the world. And together we sing, Beyond the Moon and Stars, verse 5. So we sing together. Beyond the moon and stars, as deep as night, so great our hunger, Lord, to see your light. The sparrow finds her home beneath your wing. So may we come to rest where angels sing. When life's great journey ends and day is done, then may our eyes behold your holy one. Beyond the moon and stars, as deep as night, so great our hunger, Lord, to see your light. The sparrow finds her home beneath your wing. So may we come to rest where angels sing. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you. We come together this afternoon to pray in thanksgiving for the life and ministry of Sister Michaela. Confident that God always remembers the good we have done and forgives our sins, let us pray. God of the living and the dead, 
we ask that you admit Sister Michaela to the joyful company of your saints and raise her on the last day to rejoice in your presence forever. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. And Sister Mary Ann Nessel will now proclaim our scripture reading. Our reading is from the Gospel of St. John. Jesus said to his disciples, do not let your hearts be troubled. Have faith in God, have faith in me. In God's house, there are many dwelling places. If there were not, would I have told you that I'm going to prepare a place for you? I will come back again and take you to myself, so that where I am, you also may be. Where I am going, you know the way. Thomas said to him, Master, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to our God except through me. The living word of Jesus Christ. Thanks be to God. And we pause. And we turn to Christ with confidence in our prayer of Sister Michaela. And Sister Jean Paul will lead our universal prayers. We turn to Christ with confidence in our prayer of Sister Michaela. Our response is Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Son of God, who came to destroy sin and death, we pray. Christ, Christ have mercy. Lord Jesus, gentle shepherd, who brings rest to our souls, give peace to Sister Michaela forever, we pray. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, we acknowledge all of our deceased sisters, associates, relatives, friends, and benefactors, we pray. Christ have mercy. And the response for the next prayers will be, Lord, hear our prayer. In thanksgiving for Michaela's leadership and clear thinking, let us pray, Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For her family and many friends in this time of loss, we pray. Lord, Lord hear, our prayer. hear our prayer. For her caregivers and all who helped her through these last months of her journey, let us pray. Lord, hear our prayer. And we conclude our prayer. May the peace of God, which is just beyond all understanding, keep your heart and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of the Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. And now we have the reading of the list of names of our sisters and associates and staff who have died this year, and um, that would be Sister Margaret Schultz. Sister Margaret.
Sister Betty, I'll be happy to read them. Thank, Thank you. you. Associate Margaret Larson. Sister Carolyn Strack. Associate Maggie Mitchell. Sister Michael Therese Bauer. Jim Hampton. Sister Ann Stresick. And today we add to the communion of saints, Sister Michaela Zane. And at this time, you are invited to share your own memories about Sister Michaela or any stories that you might have. And if you raise your hand or put your name in the chat box. Um, Karen Davis. Hi everyone. Just wanna say um, Sister Michaela was such a huge part of St. Joseph's Academy. Um, she brought grace and class in everything that she did. So many things that she did at St. Joseph's Academy. And one of the big things is she brought the first board to St. Joseph's Academy, which has been a tremendous help. And for me personally, I thoroughly enjoyed um, the dinners out with her and her candy coated pecans that she would make for us every Christmas. Just loved her. You. Next is Patty. Barbara Jennings, and she is at Carondelet. You need to unmute. Thank you. Uh, I worked with Lynn, with <laughs> Michaela, Mickey, at St. Teresa's Academy for quite a few years. She uh, became in charge of the modular scheduling in the early 1970s and the days before we had computers that could do all of that within probably five seconds. Mickey would spend hours during the summer uh, between obviously classes to uh, do the scheduling by hand. I think she had some other people to that would come in and help her once in a while. But um, she also knew how to have fun uh, in the afternoon to uh, either go swimming or uh, I think she went did a little sunbathing um, at that time also. And she was so patient with all of the requests of the, the faculty at St. Teresa's. Um, she would send out a schedule and they'd say, oh, I don't like this, or can you change this? And she would try to work on it. So I think she uh, deserves a huge thank you up in heaven for all the work that she did. And just this uh, last couple of days, I've talked to some of the students there that were there at the same time and knew her uh, and um, that I had also be you know, teaching at that time. And they also had so many beautiful things to say about it. the best teacher at St. Teresa's. Thank you, Barbara. Next is Barbara Dreyer. I remember standing, waiting to get into the auditorium at St. Joe's Academy for the mission day, the opening of the mission day. And students were kind of coming and going and parents were there too. And one student was standing by her mom and Michaela walked by and the mother just kind of whispered, does sister ever smile? You know how serious she can get, you know, and this was something very important. So she looked serious. <laughs> and, and the young woman said, mom, watch this. And as Michaela walked by, she said, hey, Sister M. And Michaela turned and she was smiling from ear to ear. And she looked at her mother and she said, really, mom, she's got the best smile in the house. 
Um, you know, and I thought that's Michaela. She, she's serious. She knows what she needs to do. She focuses herself and she knows where humor fits, especially when we all need it. A fine woman. I hope we could be like her. Thank you, Barbara. Next is Mary J. Is that me, Mary Jo? That's Hill? you. Hi, I, I was on the faculty at St. Joseph's Academy from 1999 to 2010. Sister Michaela was an angel. And she said to me once, she loved that our um, um, nickname at St. Joseph's Academy the St. Joe Angels. Once we were leaving to go on a Kairos retreat and I stopped her and I said, sister, will you pray for us? And she said, I will. And she thanked me for going for the, you know, it was, a, it was quite a commitment to be a leader uh, for Kairos. And she said to me, every prayer you say and every sacrifice you make for St. Joseph's Academy is held in the heart of St. Joseph. And I was like, had a million things in my mind. And I said, excuse me? And I said, well, I'm named after St. Joseph and I work at St. Joseph's Academy. And when I got my job here, my husband started calling me Angel, which he'd never done once, but I've gotten so much from my relationship with the Sisters of St. Joseph of Crondelet. Sister Michaela was a seriously prepared 21st century woman, and she was a seriously active Christian Catholic woman. And I've got to say a word. Um, she was always meticulously dressed. Once we were having lunch together at one of the faculty luncheons put on by the parents, it was a faculty appreciation. And I said to Sister Michaela, she had on the most beautiful bracelet I had ever seen. And I said, can I borrow your bracelet just for the weekend? I'll give it back to you on Monday. And she began to take it off. I said, no, I was, it was a joke. It was a joke. She came to my classroom and tried to give me Bar, you know, lend me the bracelet. I said, Sister, no, I, I just wanted you to know how much I loved it. But I love Sister Michaela, and I know she's in heaven. Thank you. Thank you very much. Next, we have Patrick. Good afternoon, everyone. <clears throat> uh, nice to see so many people there for my aunt. I'm Patrick Spray, and um, Mickey's younger daughter, Donna, is my mother. And then my cousin, Ashley and Stacy are here too. That was her twin sister, Diane. And um, I just want to say, Patty, it's great to see you. I, under these circumstances, I'm sorry, but we lived right down the street from Mickey and Patty and Rosemary. And uh, before I continue any further, I just want to say when I spoke with Mickey on her 80th birthday, she expressed to me that you all have lost several in your community this past year and our hearts are out with you. Um, Sister Pat Dunphy has just done a beautiful job trying to keep us connected and keeping me in touch with my aunt. And listening to you all talk just is bringing back so many memories right now. Um, I sent Mickey a letter with a very late Christmas card a few weeks ago. And I'm going to just try to repeat a few things I mentioned to her there. M Mickey was such a unique individual. Um, she had, again, two younger sisters with families. Uh, our grandfather, Victor, her father was alone at that time. And one of the things I think about my aunt the most is she listened. She, she listened to all of us and all of our trials and tribulations and joys too. Um, Mickey never was a big talker, which runs in our family. We're all big talkers, the poor woman. Um, but she had the patience to listen to us. And, and try to consider our perspectives. I saw an incredible amount of empathy at a young age. Um, I was an educator for 25 years, and I do believe, and I told Mickey a big reason is because of my Aunt Michaela. She had a love of literature. I still have several of the books that she gave to me. 
Um, and you know, most kids are like, oh, I don't want a book for my birthday. I could not stop turning the pages of Jack London. Uh, she gave me portrait books about railroads. I wanted to go travel the world. And probably my favorite book was a book called I Hear America Talking, which is basically a history of language and word etymology. And what a young 12 year old found in that book, profanity, some taboo topics, I thought, my aunt is so cool. She's a sister and she gave me this book. I cherish those books. I, I, I turned so many people onto them. My parents moved away. I, I joined the Peace Corps uh, in 93 um, and my parents had moved away before that. And I spent a little bit of time with Mickey at that time. Um, she, I feel like she was the first adult that really listened to me that really had patience to hear what I had to say and, and questions about a lot of things in life, including my faith. Um, we, we were able to reconnect over the years. I visited her in St. Louis, but to be honest, we, we haven't kept in touch as much as I would have liked. And I'm so grateful again to Pat, for kind of rekindling that connection again for me to realize what an amazing woman Michaela Zayner was. I think of the countless students you've mentioned from Avila, St. Teresa's, I have friends at Rockers uh, College, you know, that, that directly went into their programs because of her, that still talk about her this day. And I just think of not a loss right now, just all the beautiful things that she gave and all the things that you sisters do to give to our world. And we're, we're so grateful. I, I'll leave you with this. You know, Mickey was a very independent person in a lot of ways. And I know that she enjoyed being alone <laughs> and living in her space where I visited her. But I do believe that her coming back to you all a few years ago was a godsend. You know, I just feel like she's had an incredible community and support that a lot of people don't have when they get older. And I'm, I'm grateful for your, your, just your kindness to her. Thank, thank you so much for doing this. And um, we just, our family just really appreciates everything you all do every day. Thank you. Thank you, Patrick. Okay, if you have something to share, please type your name in the chat or raise your hand. Barbara Volk. You need to unmute, Barbara. You got it. I sat next to Mickey in the postulate and I always admired her because she always looked perfect. Everything about her was perfect. She had everything in order. She always was on time. She was a real example to all of us. And then I think for a while we sat at the table together too because we might've been in alphabetical order for a while. I know we, we somehow um, were together for some and we both had good appetites. So we kind of tangled over who got the last in the bowl. And um, we always joked about that. But Mickey was just an all around person, interested in many things, a fine educator. And I surely will miss her because I looked up to her always. And I always admired how she did it so beautifully and so well. So thank you, Mickey, and I hope you are enjoying your reward. Okay, anyone else? I have a note from a former member of our reception. This is, an, this is a note from Ann Craddock, who is a member of our reception, and she is an alum of St. Joe Academy. And this is what she wrote to me um, after finding out about Michaela's death. It is so fitting that Sister Pat was by her side at the end. They made such a great team working together at St. Joe. As an alum, I was so proud of them. Michaela had such a fine, commendable work ethic and expected much of herself. Even during the time we shared in formation years, she was sincere and steadfast in wanting to do what she demanded of herself. I deeply admired that especially because in her, it was combined with such gentleness and grace. 
That was from Ann Credder. Thank you. Thank you. Pat Dunphy. You have to unmute, Sister Pat. I would just like um, Stacy and Ashley and Patrick and um, Bill, if you're on, just to know uh, those last hours that when Patty Lindauer and I were with your aunt, um, even though she seemed distant, she had a great love for all of you and um, really tried to express to me that I needed to let you know that, and that um, when she when she was in the last days, like even last hours, um, there was a gentleness and a peace about her. I I, I have never experienced um, watching a doctor and our nurse Patty Lindauer take such compassionate care of someone who was obviously struggling. And when those two got together and explained to Michaela what was happening to her and asking her, do you understand if I do this, this is what's going to happen? She shook her head. So she was ready to meet her God, but she wanted to make sure that I heard her say that she wanted you to know, Patrick and Ashley and Stacy and William, she loved you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Uh, Santa. And please unmute yourself. Lines that come to me with Michaela, whom I loved dearly and uh, uh, just did, was um, who shall find a valiant woman? Um, that, that's what I think of Sister Michaela. Um, I was graced, I feel graced to have known her in somewhat a different way. Um, she was not afraid to risk. Um, and just all of us, when I was at St. Joe, look forward to a soup day, which was once a month, because Sister Michaela brought the best soup and the classiest of crock pots. And the rest of us were like, oh my God. Uh, just a, just a, a, a great lady. And I kept up with Sister Michaela until these last uh, few weeks. And she did something else for me personally. I went in and I asked her, I said, Sister Michaela, would it be okay if my son used the chapel to get married? It's not a Catholic marriage. It wasn't a Catholic marriage, but I just would love it. You know, I don't, she didn't hesitate a minute. And do you know how many girls have asked to be married in that chapel and did not? So she just, who shall find a valiant woman and was not afraid to risk. And I loved going out with her for lunch uh, and just talking with her and sharing books that she had read and reading the same books and sharing uh, the content. So uh, what a privilege to have known her. Um, and uh, thank you very much for living the life of a valiant woman. Thank you, Santa. Thank you, Santa. Mary Carol. Um, I have a long history with Michaela. I was her guardian angel when she was a postulant. And so I, thoroughly enjoyed during that short period of time getting to know her and her father and hearing her stories about her siblings and her grandmother during the summers. And um, then I left town and we lost track. And 
The next thing I knew, many, many years had passed and uh, Michaela came to Font Bond as our grant writer. And so I had the privilege of doing some work with her. And um, the biggest privilege I had was working with her for an, our central accreditation report for a period of a couple of years. Um, any of you who have done those know that they are very expensive reports and they take a lot of time and energy. Um, I had previously done two of them by myself. And so it was a real joy to have a co-chair, Mickey being my co-chair. And um, the thing that I remember most about that was her meticulousness and re her research for the report and her beautiful writing skills and how gently she hounded some of the faculty and staff who were so slow in getting their responses in to our requests. And so I, I just thoroughly enjoyed those few years that she worked at Fontbon and that I had that, that opportunity and that privilege to work closely with her. And um, I will miss her. Thank you. Thank you, Mary Carol. Next, we have Marianne Kina. And Sister Marianne, please unmute yourself. Marianne, unmute yourself. I am. I am. I am. I am. I am. Sorry. Okay. okay. Well, my story is kind of funny. Uh, no, it is funny. Um, this past December, Michaela turned 80. And um, we were having a dinner for her here at the house. And uh, Karen Davis and Pat and I joined for dinner. And I called Michaela and I said, well, now, Michaela, for your 80th birthday, what would you like to eat? Oh, I want a big steak, a big steak. <laughs> and so, and I said, anything else? No, no. So now this is December, this past December. And so um, she said one other thing. She says, now, if you're gonna put it on the grill, I want it over on one side and then take it off right away and put it on the other side. So I was a little nervous about that kind of grilling, but I thought we're gonna make this work. So we had, <laughs> it was now time to serve dinner and honest to God, that steak was perfect for Michaela, for Michaela. And the other thing that I just couldn't believe it because she was always so tiny. She ate the entire steak that was what it, I would call raw on the inside with great delight. And so also because it was her birthday, you know, we have to have presents. So we had a few little things for fun, but Pat Dunphy always gave her a subscription to, to some um, oh, Eating Well magazine or Southern Comfort, any, any kind of magazine that had recipes in it. Now, actually, you would believe she was making them every day. But she enjoyed so much that kind of diversity amongst all of the illness that she was going through. And so I guess I'm just really delighted to have been able to share um, just a fun, fun evening with her. Thank you. Thank you, Marianne. Um, Suzanne Giblin. I had the gift of spending several hours with her the Saturday before she was diagnosed, uh, that she went back into the hospital, which we thought was going to be just for a checkup. And it wound up that um, she was diagnosed with COVID. In that couple of hours, um, we talked about everything of our minds and our hearts. Um, I commented on how brave I thought she was to be um, looking at her illness in such a direct way, refusing treatment. Um, she was, she assured me she was at peace. And uh, when I asked her about her support system, 
She said, Patty Lindauer and Pat Dumphy, you were wonderful for her. Um, the following Monday, I received an urgent email from her telling me that she had been diagnosed. She had been uh, tested, she had tested positive for COVID. She couldn't express deeply enough her regret that I had been exposed to her and that other people had been exposed because she knew that meant um, that had consequences for all of us. And as you talk about what a beautiful woman she was, her sensitivity, her thoughtfulness and sincerity were just so um, overt in that email that she sent. Um, we just heard this past Sunday about, um, and the greatest of these is love. And that's what I will remember about Michaela with the, the princess that she was. That was the title her dad gave her. She was a princess in so many ways, as you all have described. And particularly, she was... Um, a princess of love. Thank you, Suzanne. Anyone else? Mary Kay Liston. Unmute, honey, unmute. I unmuted. There we go. Yeah. Uh, well, Suzanne just shared one word that I wanted to share, and that was princess because that was what her father called her. Any of us who were in the uh, novitiate with Mickey or Junior 8 knew the beautiful bond she had with her dad. And I wanna leave you with a visual memory. I can still see this clearly. I'm looking out the window of the Junior 8 community room and her dad had come to visit. He was walking along the sidewalk and Michaela, we, we were in full habit then, ran toward him. He picked her up and he swung her around till that habit skirt was just like oh. a parachute. I have never forgotten that, uh, that beautiful image of her with her dad, uh, that bond of love that, uh, that shows for me. Thank you, Mary Kay. Mm -hmm. Joan Spaulding. You need to unmute yourself, Joan. Let's see if we can. You're still on mute. Down in the cor left-hand corner, Joan. Is there a box that's popping up that is asking you to unmute? I'm sending a message that should okay. pop up. Let's see. Well, does anyone else want to share while Sister Joan's working on unmuting? And we will come back to Sister Joan. Okay. One more time, Sister Joan. Let's see if we can get it. Look. Yeah, there, there you go. go. There you go. Okay. <laughs> okay. My neighbors, Louise Michelle and Judy Gill, both came over to help. So with their help, I'm back on time. No, uh, 
I've just enjoyed so much of hearing about Mickey's life outside of when I lived with her. I lived with her in Chicago when she went to the university and I was at Nativity School. And then and we kept in touch over the years. But then we ended up on Hamburg and Gravois. Mickey lived on, in a, an apartment on Gravois for a while. And then a little house became available behind us and she moved back there. So I helped her move because I also lived on Gravois. So we shared a relationship there for 18 years. And I know her meals, I even, meals for her, which of course were the same, but I, I don't know. I knew a Mickey that probably a lot of people didn't know because we got, we scrubbed things together, we mended things together and we talked about so much, but I loved and admired Mickey, no, no end. So I was, Hello. I was there to talk to her when she got home from the hospital and we, she invited me down and we talked for about 20, 30 minutes and I left. And the next thing I knew, she was positive and I was quarantined. So I've just been off quarantine for a couple of days and then Mickey died. So anyhow, thank all of you for what you said because it just rounds out who Mickey was. And may she rest in peace. Thank you, Joan. Okay. Anyone else still looking to share? Okay, I think that's it. So, Sister Betty. Okay. I'll send it back to you. Next screen. Yes. <laughs> All right, let us all pray together. Eternal rest grant to her, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon her. May her soul and all the souls of the faithful departed through the mercy of God rest in peace. Amen. And the hymn that sends us forth is the hand of God. And we all sing it together. The hand of God shall hold you, the peace of God enfold you, the love that dreamed and formed you still surround you here today. The light of God beside you above beneath inside you the light that shines to guide you home to the loving hand of god and together we pray the memorari to saint joseph for the needs of our province our congregation, and for our own individual needs. Together, remember, O most pure spouse of the Virgin Mary, my beloved Saint Joseph, that never was it known that anyone who invoked your protection and sought your intercession was left unaided. Inspired by this confidence, I come to you and commend myself to you. Do not despise my petitions, dear foster father of our Redeemer, but accept them graciously. Amen. And may we continue to live the joy of the gospel. And may our loving God give us the peace needed in our hearts. This concludes our vigil prayer. Thank you for